Good morning, beloveds. Uh, so today is the day that we gather together to say goodbye to one of my teachers. Um, and so I, I like to let you know what's going on in my life because it definitely affects how I do the readings. Just want you to know that. The other thing that I need you to know is that, um, so I'm, I gender neutral. Uh, readings and I do it for a couple of reasons and I've said and I've said this before and I'll say it again one as a woman I get tired of saying he and him a lot I get tired of saying man a lot and I'm like because I'm not one <laughs> I am a woman um, but I don't want to go the other direction and you know because I don't want to alienate the other half of the population uh, the other thing is, is because we do have people who are non-binary and you know gender fluid and so you know because gender is a spectrum, it's not one or the other. Uh, and so our title today is one of those where I may decide that I need a different title. So what I've titled it is The Rise of Humanity. Our author is Elizabeth Town. This was published in the Washington Newsletter uh, in October of 1915. So and today is August 9th. So The Rise of Humanity. The fall of humanity was the fall into consciousness of things as substance. The evolution of humanity is the rise into consciousness of the life of things as substance. The fall of humanity was the fall into a material conception of life. Their emancipation from the bondage of things material comes through a rise into in an entirely new conception of life as spiritual. We do not live in a material world, but in a material conception of the world. To live in a conception of the world as spirit and life, not matter, is to recognize things and their limitations. All power and wisdom reside in life itself, which is purely spiritual and mental. There is no life or power or intelligence in matter. Matter is in life as the thoughts are in mind. Matter moves in life and by the power of life, just as thought moves in into individual mind and by the power of individual mind. The old mortal concept of the world shall give way to the immortality concept of life itself as all power and intelligence and substance. The cause of the material world is life itself. The world is built by life. It is rebuilt by life. Its every change is the effect of the motions of life itself. We live in a spiritual world, not a material world. To remember this is eternal life. And honestly, when I read things like that, I'm like, what did I just read? <laughs> it's one of those where you, you want to kind of go away and think about it. Um, and it could just be because I've got other things on my mind today. Uh, and it's not that I don't agree with with her. I, I definitely do. Um, I'm just, what? <laughs> what did I just read? Um Although, and she, she, she's making a point that basically when we confuse the material world for the spiritual world, when we get caught up in the material world and forget that there's a world beyond, you know, uh, a world that is actually the generator of the material world, the spiritual world, when when we forget that, that's when we get caught up in the effects. Um, it's, it's like when we're in treatment for something, whatever it is that we want, um, that we desire, that we, that we need. Uh, and the goal is to remember that if it is in alignment with God, it already exists in the mind of God. Therefore, what it is that we want already exists in the spiritual realm. But what we have to do is then, so, so we realize that and then we follow the guide, the, the, the guidance that brings it into the material realm. 
And that's where the, 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 I, I don't I hate to call it the secret because it's not a secret, but that's where the, that's where it is. It's like, all right. So everything that could possibly exist does not exist in the material world, but it does exist in the spiritual world. Therefore, whatever it is that we want could exist in the material realm. Just because it doesn't in the, and, and so that's, and that's where we kind of, that's where our mind goes, wait, what? Wait, what? So that's what, that's what this one is. She's reminding us, <laughs> the, the cat is like, what is going on here? He's trying to get as close to me as possible without, um, so she's reminding us that our, cons it, we, we have to change, we have to change our focus, I think. She says, because she says, it was the fall, was the fall into a material conception of life. When the emancipation of, from the bondage of things material comes through the rise into an entirely new conception of life as spiritual. When we recognize that there is life, that there's more to life than the material world, I guess is, would be the easy way to say it. So this is one of those things where if you've watched this and you've watched me like effortlessly, effortlessly talk about it every now and again, I'm going to come up against one that I'm like, what? And so today is one of those days. What? Um, oh, we do not live in a material world, but in a material conception of the world to live in a conception of the world as spirit and life not matter is to recognize things and their limitation. And I think that's one of those one. Wait, what? Cause there is a, there is a limit to matter. There is a limit to matter. There is a limit to material. There is no limit to spirit. And that's where, that's where, that's where that mental twist is. That's where that mental twist is. They've been talking about Simone Biles lately and, and, um, when she pulled out of the Olympics, she pulled out because of a condition called the twisties, which is for her was a mental thing. When she was in the air, she lost track of where she was in the air, which then would make it hard for her to land on her feet, which is the goal here. And so that's what Elizabeth is talking about today. She's talking about the twisties, um, where we lose track of, the spiritual realm because we've gotten caught up in the material realm and the material realm is limited. It is limited. Um, we talk about when we choose to come into this material form that we are in, we are limited. It is a choice that we have made and we make it for a, a variety of reasons. Most of them unknown to us until we, you know, graduate this experience. But, um, so we, we're suffering from the twisties where we're, we're caught up in the effects and we can forget that there is a spiritual backing to the material world and that anything that we could possibly want, desire, or need is available to us in the spiritual realm and that we can focus on it in the spiritual realm to bring it into our material world. But then we look around at the material world and go, well, this is all there is. And that's not it. Okay. So, so I'm that, that's why I'm using Simone Biles is I concept of the twisties. It's like, we've gotten twisted. We've gotten twisted in the air. We don't know where we are. Uh, and that's what Elizabeth is talking about. Once we're willing to let go of the I, the conception that the material world is all that there is and willing to stretch forward into the idea that, and she says life itself, because life itself is what is back of the material realm. Spirit itself is what is back of the material realm. It is what the material realm is made of. Okay. So once we get that, then we heal the twisties and then we can get a whole lot more done because the material realm is limited. The spiritual realm 
is not. I think I may have gotten myself out of it. <laughs> I commend Elizabeth Town to you. Go back and reread this one. Um, her title is The Rise of Man. Uh, I was, as I said, I like to gender neutral things. I want to be inclusive. Um, so, but her last line, we live in a spiritual world, not a material one. To remember this is eternal life. Ma the material world is limited. One of the things when you look at the circle V, it's like, it's, it's spirit coming into material form and then going back into spirit. It, it breaks back down. But everything exists in the spiritual world and everything exists forever in the spiritual realm because the spiritual realm is not bound by time and space. That's why she says, to remember this is eternal life. To remember this is eternal life. So, um, oh, okay. The world is built by life. It is rebuilt by life. It's every change is the effect of the emotions of life on itself. So the mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to rise into consciousness of the life of things the life of things <laughs> as substance. Um, I think she says it better in one of the other, the other one to live in the conception of the world as spirit and life, not matter to wreck. So there it is. The mission today, should we choose to accept it is to live in a conception of the world as spirit and life. She gave me the twisties today. <laughs> I, had to, I had to work on that. I had to work for that one. Um, and I always enjoy them when they, when I, when they're not easy, I enjoy having to work for them. Uh, and that's the, she made me work for that. So to rise into the conception that life, that it is a spiritual life. Yeah. We live in a material world. Yes, we are made of material, but it is not what animates us. That spirit, that's life. That is love. That is God. And that is what life is. And that doesn't change. All right. Oh, okay. Deep breath. Uh, the second mission is the same mission I give you every day. It is the, it is the spiritual practice of self care. I call it doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like for you. Um, since we do have a memorial today, I'm just going to treat myself gently today. Uh, I, I'm going to get up, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to take care of business, and then I'm going to go and celebrate the life of this woman who set me on a path that brought me here, that brought me to my ministry, that brought me to the center, that brought me to Science of Mind, that brought me to all of the wonderful things that I get to do now. Um, in just one of those chance meetings and the fact that we became friends and that I'd known her for almost 20 years. So the lo most loving, kind and compassionate thing I can do for myself is to feel my feelings and give, give, give voice to the love and to remember that the depth of grief signals the depth of love. So, all right, before I get all maudlin and start crying, I want to remind you that loving, kind, and compassionate um, looks like a deep breath before you speak. It looks like taking a break. It looks like taking a walk. It looks like taking a nap. It looks like saying no to something that is just emotionally draining for you. It looks like saying yes to something that pushes you a little out of your comfort zone. It looks like eating dessert first, which is my metaphor for your life is a special occasion. Please treat it as such. Um, eat the good food, drink the good stuff, whatever that looks like for you. Um, wear the nice clothes, eat the, uh, use the special occasion dishware more often. Don't save it just for a special occasion. Burn the nice candles that have sat there and gathered dust for how long, because you're waiting for a special, your life is a special occasion, treat it as such. 
Um, I also want you to remember in this loving, kind, and compassionate that activity that um, joy is a quality of God. Therefore, joy is a quality of you. No matter what is going on in the world and in your life, you deserve joy. Please make room for joy. So tonight, amidst the tears, there will be joy because we will celebrate having had her in our lives. And that is what it is. So uh, the rest of the suggestions are the usual suggestions. Do something to engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like for you. Uh, please drink plenty of water. I ended up having calf cramps last night, which is generally a symptom that I've gotten a little dehydrated. So I may not, as hot as it has been, I may not be drinking enough water. I have to up my water and take a little bit more. It means I'll go to the bathroom more often, but that's better than the calf cramps. Um, which were not as bad as they have been, but they were enough to get my attention. I was like, oh, I need to drink a little bit more water. Hydrate. Your brain works better. Your body works better. Your skin looks better when you hydrate. All right? Because we're still in the triple digits. They're talking like 105 tomorrow, and I am not looking forward to that. Um, so uh, hydrate. Uh, and then... I do want to remind you five to ten uh, five to ten minutes of early in your day bright light. And when I say that, I'm talking about sunlight from seven to nine in the morning. And I'm talking five to ten minutes. But if you get up before the sun or it's a cloudy day, like that's happened in a while, um, artificial light can work. And if the light in your house is not bright enough, Google seasonal effect disorder lamps. Okay? They are real things and they are very helpful. I'm talking about a circadian rhythm and it's a natural hormone cycle in the, in the body. Uh, when you help to reset that by that early in your day, bright light on the face and the forearms. Um, it also helps with your vitamin D production, um, uh, that you'll have more energy during the day and you'll sleep better at night. So try it. It's all about, you know, doing, doing the best we can, doing the best you can. All right. And so then I'm going to give you my Ernest Holmes quote, open the windows of your soul, allow the breath of heaven to remind you. You do live in heaven right here, right now. It is all around us all the time. Elizabeth was making that point. Yes, the material realm exists around us. And it can look messy and weird and all these other things. But it's made of God. It is animated by life. It is run by spirit. All right? That means it's all God. What we do with it, that's up to us. And we can make different choices. But if we open the windows of our soul and recognize that heaven is a state of mind, it is a state of consciousness, because we talked about the mental twisties today, it ceases to be a place we have to get to and can become any place we are. And that, my friends, superpower. Okay? How do we do that? By doing things that set our soul on fire. Music is always a good option reading books that really open our soul and uh, make us aware of our surroundings, uh, you know, and spending time with people that create an atmosphere of love. That's another way to do it, which is what I'm going to do tonight. All right. Whew, deep breath. I got a couple more things that I got to do before um, I get out of here. So I'm going to remind you one of the ways to open the windows of your soul is to Take Emma's advice, Emma Curtis Hopkins, look for the good and praise it. Okay? Gratitude will absolutely get you everywhere, including to heaven. Okay, into that heavenly mindset. All right. Um, I think I'm at the social media part where I remind you we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. If you want to know what the center is up to, please email info at creativelife.org. That will get you on the constant contact. That comes out about once a week. And the hot links are hot. If it says click here now, it'll either take you right to the information you want, i.e. the Soul Session playlist on the YouTube channel, or it'll take you to the person that can help you get it, the information. There's a great thing that I belong to called Philosophy Fridays. If you click on that link, it'll take you to David Lemaster, who is the moderator for that. So that's what I'm talking about. All right. Um, yeah, so... Now I'm at the part where I get to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonder-filled day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a, lo a loving day, a wonder-filled day, a compassionate day, a feel-your-feelings day, a consistent day, a consciousness day, a conceptual day, working on our conception day, a recognizing life day, 
a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a brilliant light, a divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. Or as Reverend Jesse likes to call us, you are a godly. Know the truth of your being. Explore the truth of your being. Peel back the layers of what you have been told, who you have been told you are, and learn who you actually are in the eyes of God, in the mind of God, in the patterning intelligence of God in life. All right? Explore the truth of your being. It makes for an, a more interesting life. All right, beloveds. Um, whatever else you do and know, Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you around 9 a.m. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time.